Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Tuesday, uh, May 16th. I hope you had a great Monday yesterday. Um, and, and we are continuing to look at this section in Acts that I think really holds up this idea that that uh, uh, two, two things are happening uh, throughout Acts and really throughout this whole New Testament era, right? The time in which we live, that that uh, uh, the, the, the proclamation of the good news of Jesus and, and, and the bringing of, of the presence of Jesus and more and more into our world uh, through his people, through you and me, uh, that, that, that's just overwhelming, wonderful reality. And yet at the same time, there's pushback, there's brokenness, uh, both and, and sin, both within that we have to overcome and, and, and from without. And, and throughout this section of Acts, we really see that. Okay, and, 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 and I think for us to see this and apply it to our lives and understand that, that pushback is nothing new. <laughs> that, that uh, in fact, um, it, we, we wouldn't be able to see the pushback if we weren't doing anything, right? So if we see pushback, it, it's probably a good thing. So here we go. Um, this is uh, from Acts uh, 6. It, it, uh, y- yesterday, of course, remember one of the folks that um, was going to distribute the, uh, the food to the widows and orphans, the guy named Stephen, okay? One of those who were filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and so... We see here that Stephen is growing, all right, through this, uh, and, and he's beginning to do other things in the ministry. Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Uh, oppo- so, so through this brokenness of, of somebody saying, hey, you're not feeding our widows and orphans like you're doing yours, they get Stephen in place, and, and, and he's growing now. So, so you have this again, this, this negative, this sin, and God's not only overcoming it, he's using it to grow his kingdom and bless his people uh, through Stephen. So, uh, so it did great ones. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the Freemans. So now you have the opposition. You have the pushback, right? Uh, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. So now you have uh, Jews <laughs> from from. Uh, uh, outside of town, so to speak, that, that aren't from Jerusalem, who have refused to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and they're attacking this one, this Stephen, who is proclaiming Jesus. These men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. So they argue with Stephen, they can't stand up to Stephen's arguments, right? Uh, and, and I mean, have you ever, have you ever had that experience? Uh, and some folks just they, they shut off their brains when that happens. I mean, there's, for instance, there's so much evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What are you going to do with that, right? Although, let's talk about something else. <laughs> or, I, I don't believe that. Well, it's not about whether you believe or not. Look at the evidence. You can trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That, you know, that's, that's up to you. But you can't deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And, and so it goes, right? Um, then they seek, so what do they do? They secretly, pers- when they couldn't win the argument, when the truth was right there in front of them, then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So it looks like evil's going to win here, right? I mean, they're stirring up uh, uh, people to, to lie. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized uh, Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. The, the uh, 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 This is the the highest political arm uh, and, and actually religious arm it, it, amongst the Jews. They can condemn him. They produced false witnesses who testified, false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. But we have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. And, and, and so um, you have what seems an overwhelming pushback. How can he stand up against false witnesses? Uh, and they're not vetting them because the powers be doesn't want to vet them. It seems like uh, uh, evil will win, right? And how many times doesn't seem like evil will win and, and will push back the things of God in our lives uh, and our, in our witness and our mission, right? Uh, and then we have this little verse. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. But God is with Stephen, you see. Uh, and and uh, as we'll see tomorrow, uh, he, he will not be shut up. In the power of God, he will proclaim truth. Um, but, but here we have that situation where it seems like 
the evil is, is overwhelming, right? And, and the powers that be. Uh, and sometimes it seems like that in our lives. But Jesus Christ is Lord. His presence is with us, just as it was with Stephen. Uh, and in Jesus Christ, we already have overcome and will overcome every day into eternity. What does that mean for you in the life that you live? Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for this account. You, uh, lots of times, Lord, we don't, we don't think you know what's going on, uh, and yet you do, and every, but everything is in your hands. And even though evil pushes back, you've already won for us on the cross. It is finished. You already won for us in the empty tomb. Uh, you beat every enemy, death and hell and Satan himself in the empty tomb. Um, show us, Lord, that it's that victory we live in even when evil pushes back against us. We pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you. Bye-bye.